talking about that requiring knowledge do you think the conversation on mental health in malaysia needs to increase are we is it increasing yeah. do you think that we need to take even bigger steps because the level of kids or the inter- intelligence or you said freedom in the, on the internet everything is increasing every day mm. every year so many people can do so much of things on the internet so where do you think the conversation needs to go in malaysia okay here's here's the here's the thing when you have children in schools now all schools are having uh, counselors and these are some of the really good stuff the malaysia that malaysia is doing um now they're talking about increasing the number of counselors in school okay very good school counselors still see too many students so you have identified an issue with school counselors and uh, or you've identified an issue with a child and the child sometimes parents also are stressed parents also need support okay where do the parents go for counseling now if you can afford private counseling yeah there are centers that provide pr- private counseling mm-hmm. but do we have enough community centers do the community centers feed back into counseling not much there's not many commu- there's not many places a parent who is of average sse could actually get you know consistent counseling support and uh, the sometimes the wait list for clinical psychologists can be 2 years developmental psychologists is 2 years and that's you know 2 years is a lot of time when you're talking about children so it's not only the parents that need that support it is taking it to the next not sorry it's not only the children that need support it's taking it to the level of how then is are we supporting the families of his, of these individuals are these centers that provide these types of support multi dimensional support mm-hmm. counselors social workers clinical psychologists psychiatry access to all these factors and because it's malaysia if you have it in a pusat kebajikan uh, pusat kebajikan mental and your neighbor is seeing you go to a pusat kebajikan mental <laughs> you know these are fact these are simple things that will derail a community center when a community center is built around you know something like that people don't want to go because you know what if my neighbor see what if my friends see what if they think i'm crazy what if i go if i go for my problems and then my partner wants to divorce me and then uses that against me in a court now i've had situations like this i've had cl- i've had this this topic come up with clients i dare not i dare not go and see a counselor because you know i'm having issues with my husband i'm scared that or my wife and i'm scared that if i go into divorce proceedings they will take it to court and say that i'm crazy when actually i'm the one trying to get healthy now talking about that mental health uh, there is a lot of mental health in malaysia actually is looked on looked at like a weakness yes. so we have these societies who look at mental health and maybe they can use that against another person now how do we change that okay that's a that's a slow change but it can be done the first thing is that when more people of higher positions come out and say look i've had issues i've gone to see counselors I mean I'm a counselor and I've had therapy I'm not I'm not shy to say it yeah. you know and they are and but m- many people don't want to they don't want to say that oh I've seen a therapist I've gotten help because they think that if I go and see a counselor or I go and or I go and see a psychiatrist it means I'm sick no it's not mm-hmm. what it means is that you are a normal person for the most part most of us are in, are normal people in abnormal situations our our situation is not normal our situation is not something that you know other families or other uh, your friends are facing because you you have a complex situation so how so then if you at that point in time go and get some support go and get help you can overturn the mental health issue quite fast mm-hmm. however like you know if if you if you have a potential for diabetes and so you need to you need to have support you need to have, you can start off with nutrition support mm-hmm. and you you do nutrition support you never actually get full blown full blown diabetes because you're managing the situation similarly if you are in a complex situation that is overwhelming you if you get support at early stages you may not it may never actually develop into a disorder some disorders you can actually you know kind of overturn the disorder by recognizing that i'm in a situation that i cannot handle and instead of allowing the situation to build on me every day for a year or two and then creating and then having it develop into a disorder maybe if i get help early i can manage it Are i you, can get the support to manage very interesting even for me mm. a person who does shows on health <laughs> i've helped i've gone and 
seen a therapist and I've had yeah. to manage certain things in your life because I think one thing that we, we don't realize in Malaysia is there's this huge stigma on, on mental health. It's so difficult for people to come out and communicate yes. and say that they need help. I yeah. know. Because that shows vulnerability. But the thing is vulnerability does not show weakness. No. It actually shows strength. You actually want to take care of your problem. Because it's a proactive approach. I mean, a lot of people who go to mental, if you're going for mental health for counselling, if you're going to a situation you cannot handle, so you're going to a clinical psychologist, it is not that I'm sick at this point in time, but I'm trying to be proactive because I know the stress is building. I know that, you know, something's wrong. Inside me, I feel I'm not happy, I'm, I'm, I'm not focused, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not doing my usual, and I'm not happy. So go and get some support. And I will say this, in olden days, you know, our families have shrunk. Last time we used to have big families, you know. And within that big family, there'll be one or two uncles or aunties we hardly ever meet. But they are there to support us in the background. So we've lost all that. As the world has progressed, we have progressively got smaller and smaller families, smaller and smaller support systems. And nowadays, also because of the internet and people don't know what to post, sometimes talking to strangers who won't post, who you can sue if they post your and, and give out your secrets mm -hmm. may be the best thing to do because other people don't know how to give secrets. That's true. Okay. Let's move on into, um, the, we are in this whole mental health thing in Malaysia, in the society. You said uh, information can lead to change and things like that. What, where should it start? Should it start from home? Should it start from our government putting it on our um, country's agenda to take care, to handle mental health issues? It has to be a many-pronged approach. Because of the stigma in society and because of resources, if the government doesn't support with resources, no matter, I may be a family member who knows I want to have mental health, but my finances don't allow it, then that's a conversation that stops there. So regardless of, uh, uh, regardless of, but then if the government sets up clinics or community centers okay. and nobody visits, then it's a waste of resources. So it's not something where one can do without the other. Mm -hmm. It's a synergistic system mm -hmm. where each part needs to play a role. And NGOs, private co companies need to feed in and encourage people to go. Private institutions also have a role. The private sector also has a role to recognize that, okay, some staff need support. So maybe we do preemptive mental, uh, we do mental wellness approaches. Mm -hmm. So it's preemptive of you know, mental sickness, and we encourage people to go, you know, just for, just, just to check in and make sure that they have got good, you know, support systems. Let's move on into, um, talking about that private organizations trying to take care of the, their employees. Do you think that insurance companies, insurance companies need to look at insurance policies and say that let's yes. put also mental health on the agenda? Obviously, if you're going to, you know, no, insurance companies nowadays are very good at having um, you know, pre pre checkups. You know, yeah. preventive measures. But in mental health, there isn't any. I mean, physical health is fine, but if people have mental health issues, it's going to affect their physical health. It's going to affect everything else. So, it's just to sometimes extend it from only looking at physical health to encompassing the wholeness of an individual. You know, all factors of an individual, and the brain is a huge organ. Okay. And so, when insurance companies can look at preemptive measures for, for physical health, why is it so difficult to have preemptive measures for mental health? I mean, you can now the insurance companies are coming up with apps for physical health. Okay, so have similar things with mental health. No. But they're so scared to go into that area because it's new. Yeah. Anything new, people take a long time. But yeah, it's relatively new in society, but it's needed.